Hare Krishna, my dear devotees, welcome back to the daily readings of Srila Prabhupada's books here in the Haven, uh, which is in Kent Hive, Kent, Southeast England, just a stone's throw from the English Channel. Today is the first day of the uh, Platinum Jubilee of Queen Elizabeth, which is quite emotional and very unusual to see that many people uh, in a positive attitude praising someone, praising a leader. It, it shows actually the remnants of the monarchical system and how much superior it is that the people can get feel a, a f affection for the queen mother. Queen mother means she's the mother of the citizens as the president is supposed to be like the king like the father of the citizens. So although it's all perverted now, there's nothing really pure, but still there's a remnant there. So, but the Srimad Bhagavatam <coughs> explains the actual full system and the full history of the system. So, Srimad Bhagavatam Mahima Stotram by Srila Sanatan Goswami describes the Srimad Bhagavatam, the history of the universe, uh, in glowing terms. Uh, it goes like this. Sarva Shastra Yusha Sarva Vedaika Satpala Sarva Siddhanta Ratnaja Sarva Lokaika Drikprada O nectar from the ocean of all scriptures, singular fruit of all the Vedas, rich mine of the precious gems, of all conclusive truths, you are the only giver of sight to all the worlds. Sarva Bhagavata Prana, Srimad Bhagavata Prabho, Kali Dwanduditaditya, Sri Krishna Paribhartita. O life heir of all the Supreme Lord's devotees, O Master, Srimad Bhagavatam, you are the sun risen in the darkness of Kali, you are the exact image of Sri Krishna. Paramananda Pataya Prema Varshakshadayate Sarvada Sarvasevyaya Sri Krishnaya Namostume. I bow down to you who are supremely blissful to read. Your every syllable pours down a flood of prema. You can always be served by everyone. You are Sri Krishna Himself. Madeka Bando Matsangin Madguro man mahadana, man nistadaga mad bhagya, mad ananda namostute. My only friend, my constant companion, my spiritual master, my great wealth, my savior, my good fortune, my source of ecstasy, I bow down to you. Asadu, sadhu tadayin, atini chuchitakada. O bestower of saintliness to the unsaintly, O exalter of the most fallen, please never leave me. Always appear in my heart and my voice with pure love. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudivaya. <clears throat> Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudivaya. So we reach the ninth chapter of the third canto of Srimad Bhagavatam, <coughs> Brahma's <coughs> Prayers for Creative Energy. We're beginning with text 25. And the Lord Brahma is in the middle of his prayers to Garbhadakshaya Vishnu. Starting with text 25. <clears throat> the Lord, who is supreme and is the oldest of all, is unlimitedly merciful. I wish that he may smilingly bestow his benediction upon me by opening his lotus eyes. 
he can uplift the entire cosmic creation and kindly remove our dejection by sweetly speaking his directions. Purport. <clears throat> the Lord is ever increasingly merciful upon the fallen souls of this material world. The whole cosmic manifestation is a chance for all to improve themselves in devotional service to the Lord. And everyone is meant for that purpose. The Lord expands Himself into many personalities who are either self-expansions or separated expansions. The personalities of the individual souls are His separated expansions, whereas the self-expansions are the Lord Himself. The self-expansions are predominators and the separated expansions are predominated for reciprocation of transcendental bliss with the supreme form of bliss and knowledge. The liberated souls can join in this blissful reciprocation of predominator and predominated without materially concocted ideas. The typical example of such a transcendental exchange between the predominator and the predominated is the Lord's Rasalila with the gopis. The gopis are predominated expansions of the internal potency and therefore the Lord's participation in the Rasalila dance is never to be considered like the mundane relationship of man and woman. It is rather the highest perfectional stage of the exchange of feelings between the Lord and the living entities. The Lord gives the fallen souls the chance for this highest perfection of life. <clears throat> Lord Brahma is entrusted with the management of the complete cosmic show and therefore he prays that the Lord bestow his blessings upon him so that he may execute its purpose. Text 26 The sage Maitreya said, Vidura, after observing the source of his appearance, namely, the personality of Godhead, Brahma prayed for his mercy as far as his mind and words would permit him. Having, thus having prayed, he became silent, as if tired from his activities of penance, knowledge, and mental concentration. Purport Brahma's enlightenment in knowledge was due to the Lord <clears throat> sitting within his heart. After being created, Brahma could not ascertain the source of his appearance, but after penance and mental concentration, he could see the source of his birth and thus he became enlightened through his heart. The Lord is therefore called the Chaitya Guru, the spiritual master sitting in the heart. The spiritual master outside and the spiritual master within are both representations of the Lord. Unless one is such a bona fide representation of the Lord, one cannot claim to be a spiritual master. Lord Brahma had no opportunity to take the help of a spiritual master from outside because at that time Brahma himself was the only creature in the universe. Therefore, on becoming satisfied by the prayers of Brahma, the Lord enlightened him about everything from within. The Lord is so kind that he is always prepared to help any living to help any living being attain spiritual enlightenment if he simply concentrates his mind to find out the source of his existence. Text 27 and 28 <clears throat> The Lord saw that Brahma was very anxious about the planning and construction of the different planetary systems and was depressed upon seeing the devastating water. He could understand the intention of Brahma 
and thus he spoke in deep, thoughtful words, removing all the illusion that had arisen. Purport The devastating water was so fearful that even Brahma was perturbed at its appearance and become very anxious and became very anxious about how to situate the different planetary systems in outer space to accommodate the different kinds of living entities such as the human beings, those lower than the human beings, and the superhuman beings. All the planets in the universe are situated according to the different grades of living entities under the influence of the modes of material nature. There are three modes of material nature, and when they are mixed with one another, they become nine. When the nine are mixed, they become eighty-one, and the eighty-one also become mixed. And thus, we ultimately do not know how the delusion increases and increases. Lord Brahma had to accommodate different places and situations for the requisite bodies of the conditioned souls. The task was meant only for Brahma, and no one else in the universe can even understand how difficult it was. But by the grace of the Lord, Brahma was able to execute the tremendous task so perfectly that everyone is amazed to see the workmanship of the Vidata or the regulator. Text 29 <clears throat> The Supreme Personality of Godhead said, O Brahma, the depth of Vedic wisdom, O Brahma, O depth of Vedic wisdom, be neither depressed nor anxious about the execution of creation. What you are begging from me has already been granted before. Purport Any person authorized by either the Lord or his bona fide representative is already blessed, and as is the work entrusted to him. Of course, the person entrusted with such a responsibility should always be aware of his incapability and must always look for the mercy of the Lord for the successful execution of his duty. One should not be puffed up because he is entrusted with certain executive work. Fortunate is he who is so entrusted, and if he is always fixed in the sense of being subordinate to the will of the Supreme, he is sure to come out successful in the discharge of his work. Arjuna was entrusted with the work of fighting on the battlefield of Kurukshetra, and before he was so entrusted, the Lord had already arranged for his victory. But Arjuna was always conscious of his position as subordinate to the Lord, and thus he accepted him as the supreme guide in his responsibility. Anyone who takes pride in doing responsible work but does not give credit to the Supreme Lord is certainly falsely proud and cannot execute anything nicely. Brahma and persons in the line of his disciplic succession who follow in his footsteps are always successful at, in the discharge of loving transcendental service to the Supreme Lord. Text 30 O Brahma, situate yourself in penance and meditation and follow the principles of knowledge to receive my favor. By these actions, you will be able to understand everything from within your heart. Purport The mercy the Lord bestows upon a particular person engaged in executing the responsible work entrusted unto him is beyond imagination. But his mercy is received due to our penance and perseverance in executing devotional service. Brahma was entrusted with the work of creating the planetary systems. The Lord instructed him that when he meditated, he would very easily know 
where and how the planetary systems must be arranged. The directions were to come from within, and there was no necessity for anxiety in that task. Such instructions of Buddha Yoga are directly imparted by the Lord from within, <clears throat> as confirmed in the Bhagavad Gita 10.10. 10. Text 31 O Brahma, when you are absorbed in devotional service, in the course of your creative activities, you will see me in you and throughout the universe, and you will see that you yourself, the universe, and the living entities are all in me. Purport Herein the Lord hints that Brahma would see him as Lord Sri Krishna when he appears during Brahma's daytime and that Brahma would then appreciate how the Lord expands himself into all the calves and boys during his childhood at Vrindavan, and how Yashodamayi sees all the universes and planetary systems within the mouth of Krishna during his playful childhood pastimes. During the appearance of Lord Krishna, Brahma would also see that there are many millions of Brahmas, but all these manifestations of the Lord, appearing everywhere in His eternal, transcendental forms, cannot be understood by anyone but the pure devotees, who are always engaged in devotional service to the Lord and are fully absorbed in the Lord. The high qualifications of Brahma are thus indicated herein. Text 32 only when you attain that state of transcendental vision in, in which you see me in all living entities as well as all over the universe, just as fire is situated in wood, you will be able to be free from all kinds of illusion. Purport Brahma prayed that during the course of his material activities he might not forget his eternal relationship with the Lord. In answer to that prayer, the Lord said that Brahma should not think of existing without a relationship with the Lord's omnipotency. The example is given of the fire in wood. The fire kindled in wood is always the same, although the wood may be of different types. Similarly, the bodies within the material creation may be specifically different according to shape and quality, but the spirit souls within them are not different from one another. The quality of fire, warmth, is the same everywhere, and the spiritual spark or part and parcel of the Supreme Lord is the same in every living being. Thus the potency of the Lord is distributed all over His creation. This transcendental knowledge alone can save one from the contamination of material illusion. Since the Lord's potency is distributed everywhere, a pure soul or devotee of the Lord can see everything in relationship with the Lord, and therefore he has no affection for the outer coverings. That pure spiritual conception makes him immune to all contamination of material association. The pure devotee never forgets the touch of the Lord in all circumstances. Text 33 When you are free from the conception of gross and subtle bodies, and when your senses are free from the influences of the modes of material nature, you will realize your pure form in my association. At that time, you will be situated in pure consciousness. Purport <clears throat> In the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu, it is said that a person whose only desire is to render transcendental loving service to the Lord is a free person in any condition of material existence. 
that service attitude is the surupa, or real form of your living entity. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu in the Chaitanya Charitamrita confirms this statement by declaring that the real spiritual form of the living entity is eternal servitorship to the Supreme Lord. The Mayavad school shudders at the thought of a service attitude in the living entity, not knowing that in the transcendental world the service of the Lord is based on transcendental love. Transcendental loving service is never to be compared to the forced service of the material world. In the material world, even if one is under the conception that he is no one's servant, he is still the servant of his senses under the dictation of the material modes. Factually, no one is master here in the material world, and therefore the servants of the senses have a very bad experience of servitude. They shudder at the thought of service because they have no knowledge of the transcendental position. In transcendental loving service, the servitor is as free as the Lord. I'll repeat that again. In transcendental loving service, the servitor is as free as the Lord. The Lord is swarat, or fully independent, and in the spiritual atmosphere, the servant is also fully independent, or swarat, because there is no forced service. There, the transcendental loving service is due to spontaneous love. A reflected glimpse of such service is experienced in the service of the mother unto the son, the friend's service unto the friend, or the wife's service unto the husband. These reflections of service by friends, parents, or wives are not forced, but are due only to love. Here in this material world, however, the loving service is only a reflection. The real service, or service in sarupa, is present in the transcendental world, in association with the Lord. The very same service in transcendental love can be practiced in devotion here. Thus one can become... <clears throat> oh, here's another mistake. Thus one can become free. Thus one can become free from material contamination and be situated in full independence in association with the Lord. This verse is also applicable to the jnani school. The enlightened jnani, when free from all material contaminations, namely the gross and subtle bodies, together with the senses of the material modes of nature, is placed in the Supreme and is thus liberated from material bondage. The jnanis and the devotees are actually in agreement up to the point of liberation from material contamination. But whereas the jnanis remain pacified on the platform of simple understanding, the devotees develop further spiritual advancement in loving service. The devotees develop a spiritual individuality in their spontaneous service attitude which is enhanced on and on up to the point of Madhurya Ras or transcendental loving service reciprocated between the lover and the beloved. Text 34 Since you desire to increase the population innumerably and expand your varieties of service, you shall never be aggrieved in this matter because my causeless mercy upon you will always increase for all time. Purport A pure devotee of the Lord, being cognizant of the facts of the particular time, object, and circumstances, always desires to expand the number of devotees of the Lord in various ways. Such expansions 
of transcendental service <clears throat> may appear to be material to the materialist, but factually they are expansions of the causeless mercy of the Lord towards the devotee. Plans for such activities may appear to be material activities, but they are different in potency, being engaged in the satisfaction of the transcendental senses of the Supreme. Śrīla Prabhupāda ki jāi Text 35 You are the original Rishi, and because your mind is always fixed on me, even though you will be engaged in generating various progeny, the vicious mode of passion will never encroach upon you. Purport The same assurance is given to Brahma in the second canto, chapter 9, verse 37. Because he is so favored by the Lord, Brahma's schemes and plans are all infallible. If sometimes Brahma is seen to be bewildered, as in the tenth canto, he is bewildered by seeing the action of the internal potency. That is, his for, that is for his further advancement in knowledge and transcendental service. Arjuna is found to be similarly bewildered. All such bewilderment of the pure devotees of the Lord is specifically meant for their further advancement in knowledge of the Lord. Text 36 Although I am not easily knowable by the conditioned soul, you have known me today because you know that my personality is not constituted of anything material, and specifically not of the five gross and three subtle elements. Purport Knowledge of the Supreme Absolute Truth does not necessitate negation of the material manifestation, but understanding of spiritual existence as it is. To think that because material existence is realized in forms, therefore to think that because material existence is realized in forms, therefore spiritual existence must be formless, is only a negative material conception of spirit. The real spiritual conception is that spiritual form is not material form. Brahma appreciated the eternal form of the Lord in that way, and the Personality of Godhead approved of Brahma's spiritual conception. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna condemns the material conception of his body, a conception that arises because he apparently he is apparently presented like a man. The Lord may appear in any one of the Lord may appear in any of his many, many spiritual forms, but he is not materially composed, nor is there any difference between his body and his self. That is the way of conceiving the spiritual form of the Lord. Text thirty seven. When you were contemplating whether there was a source to the stem of the lotus of your birth and you even entered into that stem, you could not trace out anything. But at that time, I manifested my form from within. Purport The personality of Godhead can be experienced only by His causeless mercy, not by mental speculation, or with the help of the material senses. Material senses cannot approach the transcendental understanding of the Supreme Personality of Godhead. He can be appreciated only by submissive devotional service when he reveals himself before the devotee. Only by love of Godhead can one know God and not otherwise. The personality of Godhead cannot be seen with the material eyes, but he can be seen from within by spiritual eyes, opened by the anointment of love of Godhead. 
As long as one's spiritual eyes are closed due to the dirty covering of matter, one cannot see the Lord. But when the dirt is removed by the process of devotional service, one can see the Lord without a doubt. Brahma's personal endeavor to see the root of the lotus pipe failed. But when the Lord was satisfied with his pen, by His penance and devotion, the Lord revealed Himself from within with no external endeavor. Text 38 O Brahma, the prayers that you have chanted praising the glories of my transcendental activities, the penances you have undertaken to understand me, and your firm faith in me, all these are to be considered my causeless mercy. Jai Shri Krishna PURPORT When a living entity desires to serve the Lord in transcendental loving service, the Lord helps the devotee in so many ways as the Chaitya Guru or the spiritual master within. And thus, the devotee can perform many wonderful activities beyond material estimation. By the mercy of the Lord, even a layman can compose prayers of the highest spiritual perfection. Such spiritual perfection is not limited by material qualifications, but is developed by dint of one's sincere endeavor to render transcendental service. Voluntary endeavor is the only qualification for spiritual perfection. We'll read that, we'll read that again. Voluntary endeavor is the only qualification for spiritual perfection. Material acquisitions of wealth or education are not considered. Srila <laughs> Prabhupada Ki Jai. Text 39. I am very much pleased by your description of me in terms of my transcendental qualities which appear mundane to the mundaners. I grant you all benedictions in your desire to glorify all the planets by your activities. Purport A pure dev devotee of the Lord like Brahma and those in his line of disciplic succession always desire that the Lord be known all over the universe by each and every one of the living entities. That desire of the Lord is always blessed by the Lord. The impersonalist sometimes prays for the mercy of the personality of Godhead Narayana as the embodiment of material goodness. But such prayers do not satisfy the Lord because He is not thereby glorified in terms of His actual transcendental qualities. The pure devotees of the Lord are always most dear to Him, although He is always kind and merciful to all living entities. Here the word gunamayam is significant because it indicates the Lord's possessing transcendental qualities. Text 40 Any human being who prays like Brahma and who thus worships me so many database mistakes any human being who prays like Brahma and who thus worships me shall very soon be blessed with the fulfillment of all his desires for I am the Lord of all benediction purport the prayers offered by Brahma cannot be chanted by anyone who desires to fulfill his own sense gratification. Such prayers can be selected only by a person who wants to satisfy the Lord by serving Him. The Lord certainly fulfills all desires in regard to transcendental loving service, 
but he, is, he does not fulfill the whims of non-devotees, even when such casual devotees offer him the best of prayers. How many verses? Okay. So we'll stop here. Uh, it's 8 o'clock. We've been reading for about 40 minutes. And we'll start with text 41 and we'll finish this chapter and, and get into the next chapter tomorrow. All right. Just waiting in anticipation of the reflections of the devotees on these wonderful, uh, this wonderful exchange between Brahma and the Supreme Lord Himself. Hare Krishna. This is from Sir Devi. Hare Krishna Sir Devi, my dear God sister, Hare Bo, glorious to Srila Prabhupada. Hare Krishna Maharaj, my daily addiction. Ah, that's the goal. Srila Prabhupada told us, didn't he? That's the goal. We should become as addicted to hearing about Krishna and chanting Krishna's name and hearing the glories of the Lord as the materialists are addicted to their gambling and sex and intoxication and slaughter of animals. Hare Krishna. This is the medicine. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Gopakanya Devi Dasi. Hare Krishna, dear Maharaj, and all assembled sages. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada and Srimad Bhagavatam. Jai, Jai Ho, Maharaj. Ho. And from Rati Manjari? Yes, Rati. She says, Jai Guru Maharaj, reality opens up once again. <laughs> Thank you. Hare Krishna. The prob Srila prob the sound of Srila Prabhupada's books. To me it's even better than the sound of music. Of course, if the music is glorifying Krishna, that's fine. But still, this is very special transcendental lyrics. Srimad Bhagavatam. The most transcendental lyrics. Hare Krishna. From Bhakti Christopher. Yes, Bhakti Christopher. Hare Krishna Guru Maharaj and assembled devotees, please accept my humble obeisances. It is great to be able to attend your reading. <coughs> I love to read the prayers of Brahma. I was just reading Brahma's prayers in the tenth canto. The fact that Brahma does not want to exist without the relationship of the Lord shows that no matter how powerful one is, they cannot exist without Lord Krishna. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Yes, I would say cannot live without serving, without service to the to the Supreme Lord. Yes, perfect. Thank you very much, Bhakti Christopher. Thank you. You're <coughs> grasping everything so nicely. Hare Krishna. And from Gemma? Yes, Gemma. Hello again, Guru Maharaj. Can I offer, and will you please accept my respectful obeisances? Thanks again for our nightly hour of sunshine. Uh -huh. I have been catching up this week, and I feel you have answered all the questions that I have been wondering without me having to ask. Jai Sri the Prabhupada. Beautiful how real and pure this path is, and tonight you have just described what actual True love is Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, thank you very much. So be it. And may, may we all be swept away in that current of pure love, voluntary, loving devotional service to the Supreme Lord. Pure enthusiasm. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare Krishna Hare 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 Hare
Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Yes. Uh, Ananda Murti Devidas. Hare Krishna, Ananda Murti. Dear Guru Maharaj and all the assembled devotees, all glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Thank you so much for today's reading. Today I heard that the relationship with the Lord and the living entities are always by spontaneous. Absolutely. Voluntary, complete voluntary service attitude. And it is within every single living being the potential for doing that voluntarily agreeing to serve with love, Krishna. Jemma says Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Jemma. Krishna, Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Ramo, Hare Ramo. From Ananda Murti. Yes, Ananda Murti. Yesterday, two Bhagavad Gita's distributed during lunch break, and five Bhagavad Gita after duty. Thank you so much. Very good. Thank you so much for your loving service attitude and voluntary devotional service. Hare Krishna. We're sure that you are. S- feeling transcendental bliss by that service, for sure. The feeling you get when that book goes into the person's hands and they give something in return especially to complete the sacrifice is unique in human experience. (laughs) Hare Krishna, just the embrace of Lord Chaitanya. From Subaral? Yes, Subaral. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances and all glories to Sri the Prabhupada. And thank you for your daily reading service. It is so nice to hear from Lord, the Lord Himself the assurance to Brahma in verse 3939. Prito ham astu badram te. Mm. I am very much pleased and grant you all benediction. Mm. It is so nice to hear how. The Lord reciprocates and empowers Lord Brahma. Mm. Yes, and how he does the same with everyone who's coming in the line of Lord Brahma. If they follow in the footsteps of Lord Brahma, not in external activity. Well, who can do what Brahma did? (laughs) Nobody except for Brahma in the whole universe. But we follow in his mood and follow in his attitude. And in, in, in the prayerful, uh, you know, uh, execution of his duty, uh, everyone can taste that same nectar. Hare Krishna. And from Daitari Hari. Yes, Daitari Hari. Hari Bo. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thanks once again for reading to us. I really liked the point in the beginning about understanding our position as the predominated and the Lord as the predominator free from mental speculation. Yes. It seems like a realization that requires one <coughs> it seems like a realization that requires one to really take shelter of Krishna and his pure devotees in the faith that will be properly guided instead of trying to artificially control and manipulate things according to our own plans. I like the point made a little later on a similar theme that talked about how one has the sense of being subordinate to the Lord always comes out successful in the discharge of his work. Very important things to remember. Absolutely. Absolutely. Because whenever we try to do something by the strength of our own will and for a selfish interest, we always fail. Every time. And that's what the material world is. It's one big attempt at failure. But but when one turns to the Lord, then his duties become successful. 
And we can see it if we look at the world through the eyes of this knowledge. We can actually see it for ourselves if we look at the world uh, through the eyes of this knowledge. In other words, if we accept that what the Bhagavatam says is true, if we accept, like Arjuna did, what Krishna told him in the Bhagavad Gita, Sarvam etad mitam manye, he accepts everything that he says, not one thing accept and another thing reject. He accepts everything in toto. And then he gets the intelligence by pleasing the Lord by that attitude. He gets the intelligence to see for himself that what the Lord is saying is true. Hare Krishna. And from Rati Manjari? Yes, Rati. Dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Jai Sri the Prabhupada. What struck me tonight was that the Lord mentioned the mode of passion as being vicious, papian. Quite a strong name for what is commonly glorified as wonderful in this material world. How much do we need this education of the Srimad Bhagavatam? It's essential. Without this transcendental education, people are lost in animal life, life of polished animals. That's all. Hare Krishna. Very nice reflection. Thank you, Rati, for pointing that out. And uh, Anandamurti. Yes, Anandamurti. Yes, she says, yes, Maharaj, thank you so much. Hare Krishna. Thank you. And from Bhakta Oliver? Yes, Bhakta Oliver. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you for mm. reading tonight. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. Jai Sri the Prabhupada. Really nice point. Quote, voluntary endeavor is the only qualification for spiritual perfection. Unquote. Also, it's really comforting to hear how there is no forced love on the spiritual world. And actually, this is true freedom. Unlike the so-called freedom of the material world, where, where we are just serving our material senses. Quote, In transcendental loving service, the servitor is as free as the Lord. Mm. The Lord is Swarat, or fully independent, and the servant is fully independent, or Swarat, in the spiritual atmosphere, because there is no forced service. Yes, and in the very beginning, we don't have to be forced, or we can't be forced by any outside force, but we have to force ourselves to do the service. This is what devotional service in practice means. We have to force ourselves to do the practice, even sometimes we don't feel like it. Sometimes we don't feel like dancing the kirtan. Of course, if you're an old man like me, there's some excuse. <laughs> But in general, you know, uh, we have to force ourselves to act like we're enthusiastic in devotional service. And by doing that, we will feel the, the natural enthusiasm because it's there in the heart already. Garga Muni tells the story when he first came to 26 for 7, Second Avenue in New York. And it was his first visit. And everyone was sitting down waiting for Srila Prabhupada to come. So he came in the door and everybody stood up and then bowed down, except for Garda Muni. So Garda Muni was standing like a flagpole in the middle of a you know, a little a flower garland, a flower garden. And so Prabhupada sat down and he looked at Garga Muni and said, You're not gonna bow down? <laughs> and he said, I don't feel like bowing down. And he said, Bow down and, and then you'll feel like bowing down. <laughs> and Garga Muni was so touched by that he just bowed down. And he said it was true. After that, he felt like bowing down. So this is the point. Sometimes we have to force ourselves with a little nudge, a little suggestion from the spiritual master. But still, it's up to us to do it. He could have said no, and then he wouldn't have gotten anywhere. Isn't it? So therefore, the conclusion is that the Lord will not interfere with our independence. He won't force us. Therefore, at the very end of the Bhagavad Gita, he said, okay, Arjuna, 
Now, I've explained everything. Have you heard it attentively? Uh, and then do what you want to do. It was always up to Arjuna to do what, what Krishna wanted him to do. And when he what, what he wanted to do was the same as what Krishna wanted him to do, then he became a pure devotee. And then he could fight the same battle in transcendental ecstasy, in pure devotional service. Hare Krishna. This is from Celine Wetzels. Celine Wetzels. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. What a potent chapter with such wonderful explanations of Sri the Prabhupada. Mm. An example quote, Voluntary endeavor is the only qualification for spiritual perfection. Mm. Unquote. It is so powerful and grounding to see that in each moment the choice is ours mm. either to turn away from Krishna or to turn towards him. How can we broaden slash tune our consciousness in order to become aware in each moment that we have the choice as sometimes it seems we are so fused with our own thought stream or perhaps the false ego that we do not realize we have that choice. Thank you, Maharaj Hare Krishna. Organize your life, even organize your living space in such a way that everywhere you look, you'll see Krishna or Prabhupada or Lord Chaitanya or the Panchatattva or Lord Nishingadev or Lord Nityananda or Giriraj Govardhan <laughs> or Radha and Krishna. That helps. It, it, it may sound silly in a, in a way, but it helps. If you organize your life, the way you decorate your room, your house, you know, your, the way you dress, you know, the, way we, you know, the way we think, what we hear, what we want to talk about, all those things put together helps us to, not, to always be turning our face toward Krishna. And after we're accustomed to that, Srila Prabhupada uses the example of a person with amnesia. Sometimes it will happen. A person will have a traumatic experience or an accident, a blow on the head, and he'll forget. He'll forget who he is. He'll walk, wander off and start a new life somewhere else. It's happened. It's, 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 it's actually, there are stories about it, truth stories about it. But the, the, the expert psychologist, if he finds out where that person who was wandering around belongs, they put him back in that environment. And he may feel uncomfortable in the beginning because he doesn't remember that this is his wife approaching him with affection. You know, what is, all, what is this? What's going on? Who is this? But once he stays in that environment, because the, the knowledge is there, the remembrance is there, it's just been pushed into the subconscious. When it comes out, then he feels again comfortable and happy in his natural position. So this is what our life in the material world is like. We've got amnesia. And in our life, if we practice keeping Krishna in the center by always decorating, doing some worship, chanting the names, uh, cooking for Krishna, offering the food to Krishna, and doing all these things, doing things for Krishna during the day, then we will naturally think of Krishna. And if we stop thinking of Krishna, we still do those duties. And then that will bring our mind back to thinking of Krishna. Yato yato nishtal niti manas chanchalam astiram From wherever the wa mind wanders, due to its flickering nature, one must bring it back under the control of the self. That means under, in the remembrance of Krishna and our position as, as Krishna's eternal servant. It's that service attitude. <clears throat> which the spiritual master is meant to uh, awaken or train the disciple in Hare Krishna. <clears throat> From Rati Manjari? Yes, Rati. In verse 3940, the Lord offers a magnanimous benediction, encouraging us to pray to him. Any human being who prays like Brahma and who thus worships me 
shall very soon be blessed with the fulfillment of all his desires, for I am the Lord of all benediction. So wonderful, isn't it? So wonderful and so simple and so pure and so natural. Just as a little child when he comes to give you something. You know, a friend, a, a, a guest comes in to the house and the little child, three years old, walks up to him and hands him something that he was playing with, you know, or a share of what he was eating or something like that. And the heart immediately opens because there's no uh, manipulation, there's no uh, ulterior motive. It is just pure affection. P please, here you take this. It's so nice. It's a little rock or a stone, anything. It doesn't make any difference what it is. But the effect, the pure affection the child is offering it with uh, opens the heart. Hare Krishna. Therefore, in the Bible, it says, one must become as a little as if a little child to enter the kingdom of God. From Oliver? Yes, Oliver. Important point that I heard tonight is how when we are given a responsibility in service, then we shouldn't get artificially puffed up, but always remember our subordinate position to the Lord, and then our success is guaranteed. Yes. Wonderful. Thank you. Wonder, wonderful reflection, Oliver. Thank you very much. So true. And from Rati Munjari? Yes, Rati. But before we can get enthusiastic and pray to the Lord for the wrong reasons, in the purport, Srila Prabhupada immediately restricts the listener by saying, quote, the prayers offered by Brahma cannot be chanted by anyone who desires to fulfill his own sense gratification. Such prayers can be selected only by a person who wants to satisfy the Lord in his service. Srila Prabhupada is so loyal and chaste to his Lord's service that he does not allow anyone to get deviated from devotional service. And thus, while, restri while restricting us, he blesses us. His devotion is so impressive. Yes, and he defines this attitude as the regulative principles of freedom. His restrictions are not actually restrictions. They restrict the senses, but they allow the soul to see the difference between sense gratification and devotional service. So that actually frees the soul from being drugged by the senses to do something that sometimes they may not want even to do. But they do it anyway because the senses are pulling them, the ears, the nose, the tongue, the genitals, pulling them to, to do something. But when you are practicing the regulator principles of freedom, then you can say no to something that is not good for you. And that is the freedom of the soul. Hare Krishna. Rati says, that is so beautiful. Thank you, Guru Maharaj. Hare Krishna. So I thank all of you for your wonderful reflections as usual. It's the best time of the day during these reflections. And Srimad uh, Bhagavatam ki jai. Sama Beda Bhakta Binda ki jai. Goa Premanandi. Hari Hari Bo. See you tomorrow night. Same time, same place, same topic as the Lord continues to bless Lord Brahma. And we move on in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Hare Krishna. See you tomorrow.